Are you looking for an early blooming, good looking small tree that is super attractive to pollinators and wildlife with a bonus of tasty, nutritious, edible fruits? Well then a native service berry may be just what you are looking for. In this video, I'm gonna cover four native service berries that are commonly found at native plant nurseries, throw in some fun facts about them, and even discuss their edibility. Stick around for the end of the video where I will cover what I think might be the coolest native service berry species. Let's kick it off with the common service berry, Amelanchier arborea, which has a large range covering most of eastern North America. It naturally grows as a multi-trunked small tree or large shrub, but can be grown as a single trunk tree with training and can attain 15 to 25 feet in height with an equal spread. Common service berry has white, five-petaled, star-shaped flowers that form in spikes at the ends of the branches from March through May, depending on location. Fruits that resemble large berries soon follow from May through August and are red, darkening to purple-blue as they ripen. Common service berry will grow in full sun to part shade, but the best flowering and fruiting will be in full sun. It is adaptable to a wide range of well-drained soils, but soils that may be temporarily wet or dry are also fine. Fall color is also great and varies from reds to yellows. If you love content about native fruit trees for pollinators and wildlife, be sure to pollinate that like button. As you watch this video, you may notice that the common name for some of these trees is shadbush instead of serviceberry. But why is that? The shad that the name is referring to are the American shad and the hickory shad, both species of anadromous fish that are native to the east coast. Much like salmon, these shad make spawning runs up the rivers in which they were hatched. The shad bushes bloom at the same time these spawning runs occur and were an important signal to the residents to start fishing for shad, which in days gone by was an abundant and easy to get source of protein. Next up is smooth shad bush, Amelanchier lavis, which also has a large range in Eastern North America. It has similar blooms to common service berry, but blooms over a shorter time in April and May, with the red to purple fruits appearing in June and July. Smooth shadbush also attains a size of 15 to 25 feet tall with an equal spread and commonly grows in a multi-trunked shrub-like form. It will grow in a wide variety of well-drained, moist to dry soils and in full sun to part shade. Again, with better flowering and fruiting in full sun. Fall color is excellent. As you can see, smooth shadbush and common service berry are quite similar. And if you saw the two right next to each other from a distance, you may see no difference. The main distinguishing characteristic between the two is common service berry has hairy leaves and stems, while smooth shadbush has mostly hairless, smooth leaves and stems. If you have any service berry identification stories, let us hear about them down in the comments. Pollinators and wildlife love service berries. The early blooms are an important pollen and nectar source for a wide range of native bees, honeybees, hoverflies, and beetles. They are the host plant for up to 92 species of butterflies and moths, including the beautiful red-spotted purple, and are considered a keystone species group in eastern North America. The sweet fruits are eaten by a wide range of songbirds and game birds, such as wild turkey and rough grouse. Mammals are also drawn to the fruit, and it is eaten by critters ranging from native mice to black bears. Nesting birds are also drawn to the abundant insects found on serviceberry as a source of food for their young. Service berries are truly a great addition to any pollinator or wildlife habitat project. Now we come to Canadian service berry, Amelanchier canadensis, which has a range that is more coastal and northeastern. The numerous spikes of white star-like flowers appear in March or April and are followed by the red to purplish fruit in May and June. This species can take a little more water and prefers to grow in medium to moist, well-drained soils in full sun to partial shade. It also grows in a rounded, shrubby, multi-trunked habit and can attain a height of 15 to 25 feet with an equal spread. As with most service berries, the fall color is beautiful. Okay, I covered three species that are very similar in respect to size, bloom and fruit time, soils they will grow in, and light requirements. So how do you choose which one to grow? First, choose a species that is native to the area you live in. There may only be one choice, there may be several. If you have multiple choices, choose the one best suited to your soil conditions. If you still have multiple choices at this point, pick the one that you can get locally or the one that makes you happy. Another great reason to grow service berries is they taste great and are very nutritious. Of course, you will have to beat the birds and critters to them, which can be tough. Service berries are tasty and edible before completely ripe, so you may be able to get a few before the cedar waxwings and friends wipe them out. They can be eaten fresh and raw, 
made into jams and jellies, used in baked goods, and made into sauces. In case you need a little inspiration in your service berry cooking adventures, there is a cookbook devoted solely to cooking with service berries that I will link down in the description. Nutritionally, they are like blueberries and are an excellent source of manganese, magnesium, iron, and a good source of calcium, potassium, copper, and carotenoids. They are also high in polyphenol antioxidants and fiber. You know, the good stuff. Service berries are self-fertile, but better fruit production will occur if two or more are planted. If you have ever eaten service berries, let us know how they were down in the comments. And now for what I think is one of the coolest service berries, dwarf service berry, Amelanchier spicata. As its name suggests, this is a small service berry and it only gets three to five feet tall with an equal spread. Unlike the other species covered in this video, dwarf service berry cannot be trained into a tree form. It also spreads from root suckers to form a thicket, making it a great shrub for wildlife. The star-shaped flowers common to all service berries bloom in March and April, and the red to purple fruits appear in May and June. Dwarf service berry prefers soils that are well-drained to somewhat dry and can grow in full sun to part shade, but does best in full sun. If you want a beautiful, shorter native shrub to grow as a hedge, dwarf service berry is an excellent choice if you live within its native range. There are other early blooming, fruit producing native trees that do not get used enough in landscaping and pollinator plantings. To learn about one of them, check out this video on the native crab apples and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.